Good morning and welcome to Food for Thought for Friday, March the 12th, 2021. My name is Pastor Clint Lang with Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada. Glad you could join me again for another devotional uh, message in uh, the parables of Christ. We're going through the New Testament Gospels and uh, just touching on each of the parables of Christ. And today we're going to be focusing our attention on the parable of the blind and the seeing man. In this parable, Jesus speaks to his followers about being careful who they follow. And uh, the parable is written in Luke chapter 6, verses 39 and 40. And we read, He also told them this parable. Can blind lead the blind? Will they not both fall into a pit? The student is not above his teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like his teacher. Hmm. Well, Jesus was trying to tell his audience that uh, they, in fact, would encounter different kinds of leaders as they lived out their lives. And due to the nature of how we learn, um, it will be natural for us to look towards men to lead us and to teach us. Now, some people have said that they will follow nobody but themselves, and uh, such people have the view of life that uh, they need to be self-taught and they want to be self-taught in everything. And uh, I've heard some people even say that they, they call themselves an island unto themselves or their own nation. They call themselves Turtle Island um, and they answer to nobody. However, n- nobody who follows this fo- philosophy uh, has things work out very well for them because we are not in fact islands unto ourselves, and um, our hearts are bound in the natural man by sin. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? So no matter how people try to uh, navigate their way through life successfully by depending upon themselves and their own insights, those who inevitably try to do this will uh, find in the end that they've been deceived and their failure their failure is sure um, now since we're not turtle island uh, we need to follow other leaders that uh, have been placed in our lives and uh, Jesus was a man just like us yet in addition to being fully human he was fully God in the flesh he was perfect and he, he did not sin. His very words are the words of truth because he is the embodiment of truth. When we understand the teachings of Jesus as recorded in the four Gospels um, and apply them to our daily living, we will find ourselves living in the truth and also in freedom. Jesus was the ultimate teacher, um, God in the flesh. He was the ultimate teacher and example for us and everything we do in life. And as believers in Jesus, following human leaders, um, it's not wrong uh, because it's God's design. You know, Jesus himself, being God in the flesh, but also a, f- a full man, uh, was the ultimate leader. But God also appointed a- other men, other certain men, to lead us as well. Um, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 tells us, 11 and 12, tell us, And it was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for works of ministry and build up the body of Christ. So as true believers in Jesus, being led by men who are appointed by the Lord to certain roles is healthy, and it is his plan for how his church is to operate. Um, The apostles and prophets laid down the foundation of Scripture under the inspiration of God. Um, The word apostle means one who is sent out. See, while Jesus was on the earth, his 12 followers were called his disciples. The disciples followed Christ, and they learned from him, and they were trained by him, 
And he did this in order to send them out and to teach and to train others, to lay the foundation. These 12 chosen by Jesus, um, we see where they're found in Matthew chapter 10, 2 to 4. We see the description of who they were. They were then referred uh, after Jesus uh, was about to ascend. And as they went out, no longer as the disciples, but as the apostles, the sent out ones. They were sent out by Jesus to establish the foundation of his church. Now, the word doctrine, um, it derives from the Latin term uh, for teaching and, and refers to the content that was taught in the New Testament, coupled with the fulfilled scriptures and, and, the, and the teachings of the Old Testament, which um, testified of the coming of the Messiah. So all scripture from Old Testament and New Testament um, can be used to form doctrine. Now, the proper teaching of scriptures was called the Apostles' Doctrine, meaning that which the Apostles had taught. And they were sent out by Jesus, so they spoke with his authority. The Apostles' Doctrine is true uh, not because an Apostle taught it, but because it is consistent with the Scriptures. And according to Acts chapter 17, 10 to 12, the Bereans examined the teachings of the Apostle Paul in light of the Scriptures, and they did this, and they weighed it and measured it before accepting it. One of the first exercises of the New Testament church after Pentecost was persevering in the Apostles' doctrine Doctrinally pure uh, teaching was essential to the establishment of the New Testament church, which continues today. In Acts 2.42, we are, we are told, they devoted themselves, this is right after Pentecost, to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. So, the apostles taught the essential doctrine of the church. In addition to that, God appointed prophets to establish doctrine as well. And in 2 Peter chapter 1.21, we're told, Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture comes from, its, from one's own interpretation. For no such prophecy was ever brought forth by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. The local churches... Uh, place themselves under God's authority by accepting the discipline of the Word of God as given to them by Jesus, the apostles, and the prophets. In the New Testament church, the proclamation of Scripture given to us by Jesus in the Gospels, coupled with those instructions uh, of the apostles um, that we see in the epistles, and the, the books of the Old Testament um, written by the prophets, Became, they became a guideline for developing correct belief and lifestyle. So when Christians need to be confronted and rebuked for sin or false belief or encouraged to follow paths of righteousness, um, either individually or corporately, uh, the discipline of truth um, will encourage us to walk in the proper path and uh, will also keep us from error um, and, and, and keep the church in its biblical role. This is how God intended it. So, you know, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 tells us that all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. God designed his church to be active in the world, and to do his good work. And the scriptures properly equip us um, to do those, those things that he's called us to do. When an assembly of people in the body of Christ remove itself from the authority of scripture, that assembly ceases to be God-honoring and in the model of the New Testament church. Um, the foundation of the church has been laid by Jesus the, the apostles, 
the original apostles that were with him and sent out by him, and the prophets. Um, and the word given by these men is what we now see in the Bible. That's the foundation. No other foundation can be laid in, additional, in addition to the original foundation that's been laid. Um, but yet, God didn't just cease leadership at the, uh, the New Testament first century with the apostles and the prophets. Once the foundation was laid, he uh, has given evangelists, pastors, and teachers in order that the church may be built up on its foundation that was laid by Christ, the apostles, and the prophets. So in this passage, Jesus is telling us, if you look back to our, our parable, Jesus is telling us that we need to be very careful who we decide to follow. Now, there are many appealing preachers out there in the world. Uh, there are many, maybe charismatic personalities that uh, we're attracted to, highly motivational speakers and highly intellectual men who stimulate our thinking into trains of thought that make sense to us and appeal to us. Yet at the same time, there are great dangers here. Um, because of our human weakness and our propensity to wander towards uh, wrong thinking, um, we have to be so, so careful um, because of our sin nature and the weakness of that. You see, teachers can outwardly look very appealing to us and make us sense and, uh, and, and think that, um, that what they're saying is true because it's appealing. And sometimes what appeals to our, our fleshly senses on the outset appears to be reasonable and right, but in fact it's really dangerous and wrong. Um, if we're looking at the world through the eyes of Jesus in the lens of truth, spiritual blindness, I think we can, we can define that as looking through the world through a different set of lenses than that of God's. So in today's world, we have a smorgasbord of online messages and, and TV programs at the touch of our fingertips. And we can literally surf the internet and flip through the Christian television network and find hundreds of different leaders to follow. But we must be very keenly aware that although a teacher can be dynamic, uh, persuasive, well-spoken, and, and sincere, um, as in infallible human beings, all of us can be susceptible to being led astray um, by our own interests. And we can get interested in watching and listening to some of the things that these people might say to us. And it's relatively easy for us to be spiritually blinded by the realm of our flesh, which is comprised of our mind, will, and emotions. Um, if we're not careful, uh, what appeals to our natural senses can actually lead us into wrong thinking about certain things that are not um, of God and, uh, and fool us into believing that they're actually spirit-led. They're actually led by the Holy Spirit because our impulse to follow them is very strong, but in fact, it is our senses that are leading us to, to follow them. All Christian believers should be careful to evaluate the beliefs and practices being promoted by any evangelist, pastor, or teacher out there um, that they listen to by the standards of God's Word, by the, the original foundation. No evangelist, pastor, or teacher is going to be perfect. I mean, they're not. But we should be careful only to associate ourselves with and support those that meet the New Testament standards as laid by the foundation of Jesus, his apostles, and the prophets um, as written in the Bible. Um, because, you know, it's really important that, uh, that we believe what is true and we follow what is true not just what appeals to our mind, will, and emotions, but what is of God. And the only way we can find that is by measuring it carefully in context with the Word of God. This is such an important parable. 
it speaks so much truth. You see, Jesus said, the student is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like their teacher. If we're not careful, we will become like those who are teaching things that are not scriptural. It can happen to any of us. We need to be on guard and be like the Bereans and check it out and make sure that what we're listening to and absorbing is of God. Because if it's not, if we listen to it often enough and long enough and ruminate on it, we will follow that train of thinking and become like those who we have decided to embrace as our teachers. May God give you all wisdom in this. This is food for thought.